Welcome to the Becoming Love Radio Broadcast with Dr. Diana Houston. The Becoming Love Radio Broadcast airs right here on AM 900, FM 100.7, WKXV, every Sunday at 7.45 AM. Thank you for tuning in this beautiful Sunday morning. So glad you could join me for another chapter of Jesus the Miracle Worker. I had my cancer surgery on Monday. They did a partial mastectomy, and as far as I know, all the cancer was removed. I do thank you all for your prayers, and I know that God's got this. The journal reading, chapter 12, Prayer in Warfare, Jesus the Miracle Worker. Sometimes, Lord, all I can think about is how much I love you, and how hard it is to be able to live out that love and show it everywhere I go. I wonder about myself all the time, everywhere I go, and ponder my actions and my thoughts when I get back home. Was I loving to everyone? Was I kind? Were my thoughts wholesome and pure? Were they beneficial and positive? There isn't anything I wouldn't give or do to be able to rise above the flesh into a spiritual manner of living. This I desire with all my heart. But my flesh is the most stubborn, seemingly unconquerable, frail, and willful thing I've ever known to do battle with. It always wants what I do not need spiritually. There are very many things about myself I would change instantly if I knew how. I try to do what I know is right, but it doesn't seem like I get very far sometimes, especially in keeping the flesh in subjection to the spirit. The battle takes a constant effort. My body sometimes feels like a heavy weight upon my mind and soul, holding me back from what I desire. I have to fight myself every day, and I still fall. I lose control when I know better while I'm doing it. I am truly my own worst enemy. Oh, if only I could be the person you see in me, the person I get glimpses of, how long it is taking for me to mature to grow up into the stature and fullness of the Godhead bodily, a true sister, daughter, and spouse of God. I can't understand it. I just know there is a war every day, body and spirit, soul and flesh, will and emotions. I want the spirit to be in control all the time. I want to hold everything in subjection to the spirit of God. What will it take to overcome? How do I win? The cravings of the flesh are carnal. They are not seeking after godliness. It seems like I just overcome one habit and I suddenly become aware of another one. Oh, that I could be translated into your kingdom and presence while I yet live, seeing clearly and not through a glass darkly, giving up the things of the flesh as one who has come back from the dead. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 I could serve you freely and love you and follow you with nothing to hold me down or bo- or hold me back. I wouldn't even get tired. Nothing of the flesh would hinder me. Oh, what a wonderful day that would be. My God, I love thee. Help me to see thee in every situation. Help me to be aware of your presence everywhere I go and in all I do. I want to be one with you, mind, soul, and spirit, even to have the mind of Christ Jesus in me. Oh, how long it is taking to purify and sanctify unto thyself a peculiar people, a holy nation, zealous of good works. Let me be your servant, Lord. Show me how I may better conduct myself and be able to help those around me. 1 Peter 2, 9 I would always conduct myself in the way of modesty, holiness, and godliness. Help me to cause all my life to be lived in moderation, redeeming the time. For I know the days are evil, and the whole world lieth about in wickedness. 1 John 5:19. I am not in this world to live up to the expectations of people but to do the will of God in my everyday life. To 
to help others to see the truth in God and bring them to the feet of Jesus, to the foot of the cross. Help me to stay true to my resolve, Lord Jesus. Teach me to war and be a good soldier in your Christian army. Show me how to fight spiritual battles, that I may bind the enemy and loose the captives and bring down the strongholds of Satan's kingdom and set the enemy fleeing on every side as light scatters darkness. I know that praising your name and putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness causes Satan to flee from one's person just as surely as the blood of Jesus does evil, unclean spirits. Ephesians 6.12, Isaiah 61.3 Therefore I will praise you all the time, and keep my enemy and his henchmen at bay. Help me to live my life in your word, doing your will, and for the purpose you have created me. Set a guard at the door of my mouth, that no unbecoming thing ever comes out of my mouth, but that I may speak edification to all that I come in contact with. Then all will know by my life's example that I serve you and love you above all else, and they too will want the joy I feel in your presence in their lives too. Part 2 Where is Faith? It's an awesome thing to believe that I am in the presence of God everywhere I am. I know that my conscious mind cannot comprehend even the half of it. If only I could come into the full consciousness of whose I am and who I am in Him, then I would be full of faith and confidence and able to walk in holiness and godliness, even perfection, conscious every minute of the God in whom I live and move and have my being. Yes, the Holy Ghost, even the invisible Godhead, for I dwell in the fullness of the Godhead bodily because I have accepted Jesus as my Savior and have been born again into Him. If only I could become fully conscious of the Spirit's presence every minute of every day, I wonder why it isn't a part of my conscious mind. I know it in my soul, my spirit, my inner man, but when will it dawn upon my carnal mind and my consciousness? I would have it to be so this very hour, this minute, and always remain there ever and eternally. Then every thought I would be able to bring into subjection Every situation would be filled with his presence, his authority, and his influence. I would have a discernment about me that others would not understand unless they were in the same place spiritually in their relationship with Jesus. I know God is no respecter of persons. I've heard it preached many times. But where is the power in our godliness? like that of the prophets of old and Jesus' disciples. We love to go to the temple to praise God in the sanctuary and lift up holy hands unto the holy. But where is the power thereof? Our hearts are lifted up in praise and joyfulness and thanksgiving to God. We shout, we dance, sing, run, clap, praise, pray in unknown languages, prophesy and interpret languages. But are people being saved? led to the cross of Jesus. Are we guilty of praising God with our mouths and our hearts are far from Him? 1 Timothy 2, 8, Psalm 19, 14 It's rare to see one be delivered from demons or drugs or alcohol or freed from the bondage of sin or pornography or homosexuality. Does God work in us to cast out demons or heal the afflicted, the sick, the blind, the deaf, the lame, the halt, or the diseased? Has any been raised from the dead? Do we take up serpents and trample on scorpions, spiritually speaking? Where is the power of God in our lives that the gainsayers may look and see and say, God is in them of a truth? Matthew 10, 8, 1 Corinthians 14, 25. Do these in the pagan world and society in general see God in us? 
Are they convicted of their sins in God's presence? Are we able to reconcile, to encourage, to admonish, to bring them to the feet of Jesus? Do they know we are Christians by our love? Mark 12, 30 and 31, 16, 16, Luke 10, 19. Where is our faith? Where then is the evidence that God is in us and with us? We can do nothing of ourselves. Have we a form of godliness denying the power thereof? Are we guilty of entering into God's presence and praising Him and being lifted up emotionally and spiritually, but after we leave, never thinking of Him again until the next service? Are our hearts far from Him? Are we obedient to do His holy will and walk in the way of the cross? Are we examples to the unbelievers in clean living and godly conversation? Do we love our enemies? Bless and pray for gainsayers and those who injure us or mistreat us. Are we different, set apart, peculiar, zealous of good works? Are we set apart from the crowd, from the worldliness, carnal living, and materialism? Matthew 5.44, Titus 2.14, 1 John 2.15 What does God expect of his body of believers? When he comes again... Will he find faith in the earth? Luke 18, 8. Will we be doing those things he left for us to do when he said, I go away, but I will return and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also in St. John 14, 3. Do we serve one another and esteem each other? person as better than ourself, putting them first and doing for them as unto the Lord and not unto men? Do we meet each other as if he were in Christ Jesus' spirit the same way we are, eager to help him, to please him, to serve him, to put his wealth, his happiness, his success, his prosperity above our own? Or does each seek his own and not another's wealth, as the Bible says? Philippians 2, 3, Colossians 3, 23, 1 Corinthians 10, 24. Jesus will return. Are we watching and waiting, ready to receive him? And will we be happy to see him? Do we really love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength? Is He first in everything in our lives? Do we have His Word engrafted into our hearts and minds? Are we obedient to His law simply because we love Him and want to please Him? Do we really have and know the Lord and walk and talk with Him every day? Oh Lord, I pray it be so. This is the end of the journal reading. Please pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and keeping us, watching over your children and providing for us and protecting us and keeping us from evil. Help us to grow daily into the stature and fullness in Christ Jesus you created us to be and raise up your holy bride in purity of heart and mind and soul and body in the name of holy Jesus. Amen. If you'd like to hear this program again, Go to YouTube search bar and type in Becoming Love or Reverend Dr. Diana Faye Houston and the page should come up. This is 2022-717, Program 71, Jesus the Miracle Worker, Chapter 12, Prayer and Warfare. My email address is becominglovedfh at gmail.com. I'm making a quick recovery from my surgery, better than expected, and will now start taking radiation. Thank you for your prayers, dearly beloved saints of God. You're a part of me, and I love you all. Hope you can join me again next week. Until then. That was the Becoming Love Radio broadcast with Dr. Diana Houston. The Becoming Love Radio broadcast airs right here on AM 900, FM 100.7, WKXV, every Sunday at 7.45 a.m. Please send all mail and correspondence to WKXV Radio. 5106 South Middlebrook Pike, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. And be sure to tune in next Sunday at this same time for Becoming Love.